example I cited uh, in my book, Darwin's Black Box, on this uh, from our everyday life is a mouse trap. A mouse trap has a number of different components, such as a spring, a holding bar, a catch, and so on. And it needs all these components to work. If you take away the catch, if you take away the spring, if you take away the holding bar, it's not that it works half as well as it used to, it's broken, it doesn't work at all. Now things like this are a problem for a gradual theory like Darwin's because it's difficult, because the uh, function of an irreducibly complex system only appears essentially when the system is complete. In intermediate sta stages, there's nothing for natural selection to select. Um, so, and after it's finished, there's a, a not a whole lot for natural selection to do. So things like this are challenges uh, to Darwin's theory uh, of gradual evolution. So are there any such irreducibly complex systems in the cell? And I argue that there are, are many of them. Yes, they're all over the place. Uh, for example, here's a molecular machine called the bacterial flagellum. And I guess I should add that most machines that we know of are irreducibly complex. And the cell is chock full of molecular machines, like this one. This is the bacterial flagellum. Uh, it is quite literally an outboard motor that bacteria use to swim. It's got a, a number of different components, like a propeller, uh, which actually pushes against the water and pushes the bacterium forward as the rotor spins. There's a hook region, which acts as a universal joint to attach the propeller to the drive shaft. The drive shaft is attached to the rotor, which flow, uses a flow of acid from the outside to the inside of the cell. There's parts that act as a stator to keep it clamped onto the cell membrane just like an outboard motor has to be clamped onto a boat as the propeller turns. And there are many other components as well. Ironically, for Behe's argument to work, uh, his argument is sort of irreducibly complex. If we take the flagellum out of his argument, his argument really truly is irreducibly complex, so it doesn't actually work anymore. Um, I, I, for his argument to, to be true, it must be true that if we take a single part out of a flagellum, the flagellum is utterly unfunctional. And that's not the case. It just hasn't, doesn't have as much of a function as it did if it had every single one of the parts, but it still works okay. Dr. Behe, as far as I know, has not done any research on testing his own hypothesis on the, on the specific example we heard about today, right, which the is the point. flagellum. But that doesn't mean that other scientists haven't stumbled onto it. Uh, in my field, my field is plant pathology, and we study the virulence of bacteria to plants, and we found out that they inject their toxins into the plant through a particular structure called the type 3 secret secretory apparatus. That type 3 secretory ac apparatus we've looked at in great detail, and guess what? Ten of the proteins that are in that thing are the same or have very strong homology to flagella, and it turns out that a flagellum is actually a type of a type 3 secretion apparatus. And so their whole uh, great thing, the bacterial flagellum, it turns out that it, within itself it contains a whole other mechanism, a secre secretion apparatus. So you've got uh, you know, one uh, mechanism inside an irreducibly complex mechanism. That's logically impossible. So actually science has stumbled onto disproving Behe's theory. You didn't hear about that today. What you heard him say was that his theory has been standing up very well. Go to the web. I challenge you to just type in Behe's black box and deal with all the stuff you're going to get. Okay? Here's the best one that I think. This is by Kenneth Miller. His name was thrown around a lot. Kenneth Miller wrote a textbook on biology, The Flagellum Unspun. Tells the whole story. And he is a cell biologist. He is a real cell biologist. And so Dr. Behe, has, his, his theory has been disproven. Now, why haven't we, why didn't, why didn't he just admit it? Why didn't they just all go home? He doesn't accept his own uh, 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 criteria. And not only that, nobody else in intelligent design would accept them either. They don't want to be pinned down to, you know, whether biologists can explain the flagellum or not. That's why they're outside of science, okay? That's why we say that intelligent design is not a testable hypothesis because here we happen to stumble onto it from another direction and we've disproved the, the, the example that they've used, and they aren't going home. They should be going home now. This uh, illustration up here is a cover from the journal Cell, which was published in 1998, a special review issue on the topic of molecular machines. And the editor of this special issue was a man named Bruce Alberts, who is the president of the National Academy of Sciences. And in his introduction, he states, the entire cell can be viewed as a factory that contains an elaborate network of interlocking assembly lines. 
each of which is composed of a set of large protein machines. Now, why is this a difficulty for Darwin's theory? Well, because Darwin saw a weakness or a difficulty for his theory. He wrote that if it could be demonstrated that any complex organ existed, which could not possibly have been formed by numerous successive slight modifications, my theory would absolutely break down, adding, but I can find out no such case. My own work has been cited by those who support intelligent design as saying that, well, it's too complicated. So what are we suppressing? We're publishing everything we find. We just have a completely different interpretation of, of this uh, data than do others uh, who are not biological scientists. We see clear evolutionary pathways now that we understand my machine, and we can see how the evolutionary process worked in rough outline by adding new pieces one at a time. So my machine only had seven pieces, and the human machine must have 27 or something. Uh, but all that uh, underlies the fact that the mechanism is basically the same, and that we can see that these are relative.